Today we're going to sew a pillowcase. You'll need about a yard of fabric to make a pillowcase. The pillowcase that I'm making here, the way that I did my measurements is I, for the accent piece, I measured that at 12 inches. And for my main piece, which is the stripe, I measured it at 24 inches. So I ended up buying half a yard of my accent piece, but that's because I really wanted this accent to stand out on the pillowcase. The extra fabric that I have left over, I might turn into a bag or something. If you want to buy exactly a yard of fabric, you may want to buy three quarters of a yard for your body of fabric and a quarter of a yard for your accent piece. That would mean that your accent piece would be nine inches, your body of your fabric would be 27 inches. So you, it really doesn't matter. It, it honestly depends on what you want the pillowcase to look like. But the measurements that I used for my pillow today for this video is 12 inches for the accent piece, which is the Mario fabric, and 24 inches for the stripe fabric. And then my, my little accent piece that's the blue polka dot, it is an inch and a half. And all of those measurements is that is how long it is um, by a width of the fabric, which is usually 44 inches wide. If you're getting a, I'm using typical quilting cotton fabrics and they could range anywhere from 42 to 44 inches wide. They don't all have to measure the same because if you'll see it later on in my video, I actually, once I get all the pieces sewn together, I trim off the sides so they will measure the same in the end. So they don't have to all measure exactly the same at the beginning, as long as when you go to put the seams together, they match. And we'll get to that step. So right now I'm just cutting them down to the, the widths that I need. And like I said, the reason why I made mine a little wider is because I really wanted this Mario fabric to shine. When I purchased this fabric at the store, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to use it for. So I knew if I bought half a yard, I could probably make a bag out of it. Um, I wasn't thinking about a pillowcase until I got home. And then I decided, oh, pillowcases are really easy to make. And I'm going to make this one with a little extra. I, I knew like a half a yard wouldn't be enough to do the body of the fabric, I would just look short. So I was trying to find a way to make the accent piece a little longer. And I think the um, ratio really worked, worked out well. So you can see how much fabric I had left. It's enough to do a little bag, a couple little bags out of, um, especially if I piece them together. We're going to go ahead and give that trim piece an iron. This will just help hold it, uh, help it when you pin it in place that it won't be fighting, <laughs> fighting you when you're pinning all your fabric layers together. You'll see in just a few minutes. So it is handy to go ahead and iron this with the wrong sides together. So I'm just using my wool ironing mat that I bought off Amazon, which I'll give you a link below. I love this thing. I use it a lot. I put it next to my sewing machine when I need to iron something. Um, and I also kind of use it as a pin cushion, <laughs> which is basically what I'm doing right now. I'm using my pins to hold the trim piece in place just by pressing them into the wool mat. And I'm going to do a close up so you can see exactly what I'm doing here in just a second. Okay. 
So you can see I've got my trim piece and I just stuck my pen straight into that wall mat and it holds that trim piece in place as I'm ironing it. Now we're going to sandwich up all of our layers together. So the accent piece, that's going to be the, the edge of your pillowcase. So see how it's going to be right side up on the front, but on the inside of the pillowcase, it's going to be upside down because it's a directional print. So I want to make sure I'm putting my trim on the part that is right side up because that the outside is where I want it to be right side up. And then my stripe fabric is, um, it's gonna be my inside, fab, my body fabric. So I'm gonna layer this up so that the accent piece is the very bottom layer, because you'll see why we're gonna do that in just a second. Then you wanna layer your trim piece and then you want to layer the body of your of your pillowcase just like that pin all those layers together all of the right sides should be facing each other at this point there should be no wrong sides facing each other so now that we've got that all pinned we're going to take the body of the pillowcase and we're going to start rolling it up because we want this to be in between, we wanna be able to pull our accent fabric over the top of it, and we're gonna pin it to the back, to the wrong side of the pillowcase body fabric. This is gonna be the inside of your pillowcase. So we're getting to this step. We do not want any of that striped fabric that's in that roll to be in the seam. So see how I'm pulling that accent piece, the same fabric that you pinned on, on the front. So that's the, the front is the pin we already did. That's the front of the pillowcase. We rolled up the, in, the rest of the body of the pillowcase. We're just sewing one side of it. I'm trying to make this as least confusing as possible because this is the step where it can be a little confusing. So we've got our accent piece, our trim piece, the main body of our pillowcase, and all of this is the against the width of the fabric. Then we're pulling that accent piece over that tube, which we don't want to catch in the seam at all. And then we are gonna add that to what we already have pinned. So now we're going to have um, two layers of the accent piece fabric. That's the band that you're gonna have around your pillowcase. You're gonna have one layer of the body of the pillowcase. And you're gonna have two layers of the trim piece. If you include a trim piece, which you don't have to include a trim piece, it's just, it's kind of cute. Um, there are some pillowcases that I have made where I've used like a large rickrack or um, what else would be cute was little little pom-pom trim. So there's, there's a lot of different ways you can add your own creativity and make, make this pillowcase your own or make it for friends and family. This is gonna be all finished on the inside. There's not gonna be any raw seams. So it would be a great thing to give away as a gift or even to um, sell at a, flea, at a craft sale or something. So we are just pinning all of that accent fabric to what we've already pinned. This just, it makes it easier that we've already pinned it. So now you just can pull it over and just repin it, secure it in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew it. So I like to add a tag to my fabrics. 
I've printed off my labels on spoon flour and then I just sew my little scraps that I have to the back of them. This one's a little meowth on the back of it. And I'm going to go ahead and put it facing out on the back, on the, I'm sorry, on the inside of my pillowcase. So it will face out. I'm gonna move it here in a second. <laughs> there we go. That's the way I'm gonna put it. So it'll be facing up on the inside of my pillowcase. Meowth will kind of be hiding. You'll have to pull it over to see Meowth underneath. But that's just because I used a little scrap of fabric and um, he's just a little Easter egg, you would say, I guess. But that's gonna be a lot of layers to go through. If your sewing machine can't handle that many layers, um, you might not want to add a tag there. You might want to add a tag later on in the side seam of the pillowcase where you're not going to have quite as many layers, which it would be just, just as well. So now we're going to sew a quarter inch seam. You can sew a half inch, but your trim piece is going to be a little shorter. So if you have a two inch trim piece, a half inch seam would be fine. Um, a half inch seam with the one and a half inch trim piece, you might have a really tiny little sliver of a trim, but sometimes that can be cute too. I'm just letting you know if you do take a wider seam there, it's not a huge deal. Your trim piece just is gonna look smaller. So we're just gonna go ahead and sew all the way down that and I'm going to show you a quick trick for keeping it lined up. We're just going to extend that um, seam guide down a little further on my sewing machine by using a piece of washi tape, which is easily removable. So I love using washi tape when I want to extend my seam guide. This just helps me keep everything all lined up so that when I, I can hold all of my layers in place and make sure they're in line. So I have a nice straight seam line. Now this is the fun part, kind of where the magic happens. You get to take that center fabric, the main body of the pillowcase fabric, and we're gonna pull it. We're gonna pull it out and it's gonna turn the band, the pillowcase band, right side out. And all of your seam is gonna hide inside of there. So you're not gonna have to finish that seam at all, it's going to be hiding inside. Just like that, the band of your pillowcase is done. And the seams are hiding. And that's where the magic happens. I love, I love pulling it out of that tube. It's fun. And then you can see my tag on the back. So now, when, remember when I said that it doesn't matter if the width of your fabrics are not all the same? This is the part where we are going to go ahead and trim the sides so that the widths of our fabric all match. But before we get to that step, we're gonna iron. And I'm just gonna pull the band tight so that that seam, I can get that seam nice and flat right there where the fabrics all join together. All right, for this next step, um, we had talked about how all of our widths of our fabric don't have to match because we're gonna do this. So we're going to go ahead and trim off, looks like my, 
striped fabric is much wider than my accent pieces. So I'm just going to trim it off so they all are the same width. This is a lot easier to do with a rotary cutter. But you don't have to use a rotary cutter, cutting mat, and a ruler. You could mark it with a pencil and come cut with scissors. Just know wherever you mark with a pencil, it doesn't wash out, so it will show. But it's going to be hidden in the seam. And I'm just going to trim off both edges. I'm going to trim the selvage edges off of this side. It's going to take my width down a little bit, but not enough that it's going to matter. So now we're going to pin the pillowcase together. And we're going to pin wrong sides together. And you'll see this at the next step. Why? But we're going to go ahead and pin our wrong sides together. We're matching up at the trim. We're matching the accent piece. And then we're going to go ahead and do a quarter inch seam allowance. And so the pillowcase from the accent band all the way down the side and across the bottom of the pillowcase. Our washi tape guide is really going to come in handy when we get to the next step this step and the next step. So we're using a quarter inch seam. And if you want to use a smaller seam than that, go for it. That's just what I used on this step. And then when we go to the next step, we're going to use a half inch seam allowance. Now that the pillowcase is all sewn up, we are going to turn it inside out. So that's what I'm doing right here. And so remember, we, we sewed up the wrong sides together. So now we're going to go back and do what it's called a French seam. So we're going to hide that seam inside another seam. So because we used a quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to have to move our seam allowance out to a half inch. So I'm going to remove the washi tape where it is currently, and I'm going to move it out to a half inch. So now my seam allowance will be a half inch wide, and this will allow that last quarter inch seam to hide inside this next seam, seam allowance. And this will be inside the pillowcase so that way you won't see it now this next part of the fabric that is a large that is a lot of fabric layers to go through right there where the band meets the pillowcase so if your machine can't handle that you could sew right up to it and hand sew that piece together when I purchased the sewing machine that I have right here, the Janome. I read all the reviews. I actually purchased it off Amazon. I could probably send you a link or copy a link down below if you are interested in my machine. I'm not sure if it's still available, but I will check. If it is still available, I'll put a link for my machine down there. there it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. It. I was looking for a machine that would sew through heavy duty but still be on the cheaper side and it does have a foot pedal so it's very basic it doesn't have a lot of fancy stitches but it's exactly what I wanted
So I'm going to do one last step. I'm turning my pillowcase right side out and I'm going to top stitch that seam down flat around the band. This is not a step you need to do. I just thought it would make it lay a little bit nicer. And it's too many layers to sew past the trim piece. So you really can only sew just right at that very band, that very top band. This is just basically to, to hold that seam down at the very top of the pillowcase. So when you're putting your pillow into your pillowcase, that seam just lays flat to one side. And that's how you make a pillowcase with no seams showing. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you watched, please subscribe to my channel for more videos to come. Enjoy your new pillowcases. See you next time.